pillars of eternity. Uh, you may notice I'm still wearing the same clothes. Uh, we're an hour and a half into this. Well, we will be by the time I finish this. Um, and I still want to play this. Still just want to get this done. Um, so, what happened? What, 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 what's, what, what's been going on? Uh, in the last episode, uh, our teammates died, um, unfortunately. It's a pity because I was I, I liked Herd and, and uh, Kalisha. Kalisha would have been really helpful in some of the fights. Um, since then, we've leveled up. We've nearly died twice, um, and we've heard tale of a bear. Oh yeah, and <laughs> how did I forget this? Three wizards. Well, I guessing wizards. Let's just call them wizards. Um, I did something with a huge stone that turned and now I'm hearing voices and it exploded and things happened and stuff and and annotation here um, for the last episode which is going to explain what's going on far better than I just did uh, the important bit, the important stuff though at the moment is this is a bear cave um, and we're going into it because we have real issues so let's go I have already quick saved. Still hearing things. There's the bear. Okay. Uh, for a start, let's mark him. Second of all, because that bow is doing nothing. Let's just go. Whoa! Am I dead? Can I get back up? Can I just camp? Can I camp with enemies in sight? Okay. <laughs> Let's try this again. Uh, okay. Nice and slow. Okay, I'm going to have a quick read of this because I really want to know what's going on. I want to know that this thing isn't going to attack me. Okay, so basically, you see the uh, little yellow circle on the bottom there? That basically means that's how quickly, or that's how that's how noticeable I am. Uh, or how, how, uh, how much it's noticed me. Um, and the little red circle is it basically coming to have a look for me. I, I can't do anything. I, I can't do anything with that. Yeah. Hmm. You have died. Load. I don't think I can do anything with this. Like, I genuinely don't. Um, hmm. Uh. 
Okay, we're gonna play this. Whoa, 20 damage. Cool. Take him down. Okay, it's possible, it's possible. We're gonna get this damn well done. <laughs> if it takes the entire, this might be a short episode. Sure. calling it a day there we will come back when we have more party members or when we are harder to kill sure hmm. no until then we are moving here at some speed looks like we're about to level up anyway if I'm right about what that means And we will go to Gilded Vale. Just eight hours away. Oh no. Cool. Let's go back to normal mode. Oh! Oh, this is a little grim. You must be one of the new settlers. Welcome to Gilded Vale. You'll be pleased to know that we've had some recent vacancies here. Uh, are you mad? No wonder this place looks half empty. The only answer you hear is from the buzzing of the flies of, uh, at the tree. Of course, we'll need to make some inquiries first. The inestimable Lord Radric VII has taken great pains to insulate our town from Widewind's legacy. Have you ever sired a hollowborn child? That's a rather personal question. We'll just say no. Are you absolutely certain? Lord Radric has made it his first priority to eliminate this scourge from our village. I should warn you, stranger. Here in Gilded Vale, we have a special place for dissidents, charlatans, and those who would hide a curse in our midst. He steps to the side, then climbs his head ever so slightly towards the deformed tree. Yeah, I think I know his where they go. His lordship's wife is with child and do any day now. Without his approval, I shan't be able to find you a permanent settlement. It will have to wait until after the birth. He folds his arms. We can continue our interview then. After the bell tolls from Radric's hold to signal my lord's new heir. In the meantime, you can find temporary accommodations at the inn, just southwest of here. Um. Okay, that that I, that I'm interested in. Um. Those two probably should be said. That's the one Whatever that I want to sort out first. Problem. It sounds like a matter for an animancer. However, the only animancer in Gilded Vale isn't in any condition to speak. Consider yourself fortunate. After she failed Lord Radric, we saw to it that she wouldn't profit from the misplaced trust of others. A bad cure is often worse than none at all. But if you're set on finding a bottle of troll piss or a dead Audra pebble to rub on your forehead, you're welcome to check her pockets. 
A little corpse stink is nothing when you're digging for shit. Oh, that's nice. My advice, however, is to be satisfied that you escaped and leave it at that. Cool, so I can ask these then. Uh, he blinks. I forgot that you foreigners do not have this curse in your homelands. The Holoborn have been, the Holoborn have been a scourge upon the, dry, the deer wood for almost 15 years now. Children born without souls. He shakes his head. Pitiful, dumb little things that breathe. Barely. But do not truly live. Some say the Holoborn are a disease. Some say they're a punishment from the gods. He raises his empty hands. In truth, no one knows. But they began, they began spreading after the Saints' War, and so the, na so the name Widewind's legacy stuck in honour of that foul, blasphemous pretender. His voice shakes with vitriol. I see. He regards you carefully. You want to mind where you mention that. Trespassing on Engwithin rules that ruins is illegal, not to mention dangerous. You probably saw someone attempting some new rituals to appease the gods. People will try anything these days. Uh, Barath have mercy. We we certainly have. I don't think so. Just as they finished, there was a uh, beer whack. He polished his spectacles on his sleeves. If you'd been that close to a beer whack, you wouldn't be standing here. Keep out of. Oh. Listen. Two tolls. Let that be the last. Three. Gods have mercy. It seems your arrival is ill-timed. <laughs> Three bells toll only for the death of a Radric. I fear Lord Radric's heir is lost, or else Hollowborn, and so lost all the same. You should tread carefully. Circumstances have changed a great deal. <laughs> Don't threaten me, little man. I'm not quite the barbarian that I should be to say that. What do you mean? You come to us at a time of mourning. The legacy is struck at the heart of the Gilded Vale. Our efforts to redeem ourselves in the eyes of Barath must be redoubled. He sets a steady gaze on you. What happened? He shrugs one bony shoulder. I will only know more details when the messengers arrived. The vagaries of childbirth, perhaps. But that is not your concern. I cannot. I can be sure of nothing right now. I advise you to get some rest. The inn, or a stable, for all I care. Find me afterwards. I will know. I will know more soon enough. Farewell. Um. Can I go and have a look at that? Maybe. Oh yeah, of course. Come on, we'll get there eventually. No. Were you looking for someone in that tree? Uh, I could introduce you. Stranger way to talk about your dead. He looks up at the tree and breathes out. Half the town's up there now, seems like. No right way to talk about it. I'm looking for someone who can help me feel better. My condolences. He exhales and turns his attention away, watching the village around him. Thanks for being of literally no help. Decent folks don't fare too well in these parts. Well, that's that's good. Go talk to the child. Papa says the temple is cursed. Um, well, let's go downstairs then. Let's talk to a witchron. Wurtan, sorry. A man lies resting against the wall, lit by the dim illumination of the fading sconces. Uh, he has a gaunt, fox-like aspect, and his face is pale and damp with sweat. One arm is held loosely at his side, sleeved soaked with blood. He gives you an anxious glance as you near, his, fe his features twisted with pain. Have a care if you mean to go in. He casts a quick look, to, uh, quick look towards the doorway that was left. The place is not so empty as I thought. This temple isn't what it used to be. Probably for the best. Times being as they are, he groans and shifts position, wincing. 
I'm no looter, if that's what you're thinking. Not one of the faithful, either. Just wanting to do some good, I suppose. Got my arm clawed up for it. He regards you wearily. Maybe you'd have better luck. Better luck with what? What happened to you? Uh, the man points a finger upwards. These ruins around us used to be a temple of Aeothus, the scattered god. A grand temple at that. His worshippers would come from all over the Deerwood. From Red Rae... From Red... Reed? Red Saras? Who knows? Until the war, of course. Even then you get some of the stubborn ones. The ones that couldn't get through it he through their heads that, de that their god was dead and gone. Go on. Once the legacy started, Lord, Lord Raderick decided that he'd been too lenient on the on the Athosians. He had his people go in, uh, go in and put them to the sword. Left them down there, buried under a heap of rock. After that, Raderick ordered the temple sealed. It's been years like that, up until recently. Lord Raderick hopes that, we'll, uh, that if we rededicate the temple to a living god, then we'll be forgiven. And the legacy ends, see? He smiles wryly. But until then, the temple is just as you see it, unguarded. That's where you come in. Wurtan licks his lips. The priests. Maybe they didn't have a lick of sense between them, but they still didn't deserve to go like that. Chopped up, uh, chopped down in their own god's house. Doesn't sit right with me. But if you go if you go down there, find their remains, maybe we can finally give them a proper burial. Wurtan breathes out. No small task. There's coin in it for you if you need motivating. I'll find them. Then by the flame I owe you a good turn. But listen, the temple's been sealed off for so long as crawling with creatures. But if you get past them, the priests would have been down here on the, would have been down on the lower floor. They'll still be there if there's if there's if they're anywhere. Those priests had all kinds of secret chambers, switches in the walls, trick sconces, that kind of thing. Keep an eye out and take care down there. I wouldn't want to have to send someone else after your remains. I'll be here, but I'll wait here by the stairs and keep a lookout. Maybe try to patch myself up some. But no, I didn't save it with that today. You are going to do that. And that. And you are going to do that. Huh? That doggy isn't doing too well. Uh, cool. The parchment is relatively intact, but the ink upon it has faded. You make out a few patches of careful, tidy script. Isters to the ritual floor. Rectrix of Bricka says, Demption for even these. All got and struck the largest bell first rather than the second. The rest is illegible. Definitely take that. Because uh, I feel like that might be useful later on. Hmm. Must be able to. Uh, in that case, it makes sense that. Yeah, because I can only carry four. Your sleep is restless and fevered, assaulted by hisses and whispers, blanket with suffocating anxiety. You open your, you open your eyes to awaken and find yourself in front of Gilded Vale's gallows tree, the creaking of its ropes growing louder in your mind until the sound is deafening. Hanging from the tree is an old dwarf woman whose face is shriveled inward like, uh, like mouldering fruit. Her head hangs limply to one side. As you look at her, she, looks, she looms larger and larger in your mind until she is mere inches from your face. Suddenly her head snaps up and her eyes open and they are empty and behind them is a vast nothingness that makes your stomach drop. Her mouth slowly parts and with a gust of rancid air she speaks a word. Watcher. You jolt awake, the foul smell of dwarf woman's breath still permeating your nostrils. Sweat's done, sweat's, sweat runs down your face in thick droplets and your skin is soaked from head to toe. You remember the woman. You remember seeing her decaying face when you spoke with the magistrate. He called her an animancer. Though it fills you with a new queasy apprehension, you feel a strange compulsion to see this woman once more, if only to confirm that she is truly dead. Hmm. 
Hmm. Hmm. Um. Uh, in that case, do I leave that here? Do I leave this here then? Keep him quiet. I will sneak about a bit. Go away. Ivory spinner, ivory spiderling. Okay, so we're gonna go for this first. What's his HP? No, oh, he's fine. Yeah. Doesn't feel right. No. You kidding me? Everybody died. Oh, oh I've got to go through that again. Oh, let's just chat to this guy to get through this. Continue. Sweet. Sweet as a nut. There we go. F5. <laughs> get that save. Uh, and run back outside. Sorry, dude, we are leaving you here for now. Okay, so we know not to go. We know that basically the things in that can't kill. Uh, will kill us stone dead. So we're finding the dwarf woman. There we go. Let's slow down a bit now. The squat, distended body of an elderly dwarf woman dangles from a thin, crooked bough that sags like the sag at the tugs sags at the tug of her noose. The bloated purple flesh of her neck, worn away in patches like like moth-eaten linen, bulges over the rope that suspends her, and her lifeless head lolls forward rigidly from one side to the other when the air, when the breeze shifts. You perceive a faint glow around that casts no light on its uh, on its surroundings. There is a tepid warmth to it. You feel somehow that you could reach out and touch it, not with your hands but with some aspect of yourself that has no worldly dimension. So we're going to reach out and touch this. We're going to reach out and touch a person. And stuff is going to happen. You take a deep breath, clearing your mind, focusing on your objective. As you exhale, you feel yourself spreading out towards the hanging woman, perceiving all that lies between you and her with new, unfamiliar awareness. Once you've expanded enough to reach her, there is a sudden jolt to your mind, a ringing electric surge of images and words and sounds. Involuntarily, you shut your eyes and feel yourself being pulled down to some deeper consciousness in a space occupied only by you and the hanging woman. Uh, and when you open them again, she is staring at you with eyes clouded in milky fog. Her body still swaying in a wind you no longer feel from a tree that stands planted in a misty void. The woman gives a slow nod of her head, the rope creaking as she does so. Uh, and she smiles at you. Have you come here for Whoa. me, dear? Or have you gotten lost? Ah, it is both, I think. Yes? Oh, this is creepy as all hell. No, I think not. A pity that. It would be simpler. A mercy, then. Do not have to wander anymore, no? Alas, we are here, you and I. Wherever here may be. She's got a bizarrely sing-song voice. Uh, how are you able to speak to me? Is that what we're doing? Perhaps it just seems that way. Perhaps it is the easiest way for your mind to make sense of it. I think it is a very good choice. Uh, I need to understand something that's happened to me. She nods, a look of pity on her face as though consoling a child. The world looks a little different than it used to, is that it? Feels like you're noticing things for the first time that have always been there. She nods. You have seen past the shroud. It only takes an instant. Your soul remembers, yes? 
remembers how it sees when it leaves the body, like being reminded of a dream you had forgotten. You are a watcher now, and a watcher you will stay. Hmm. What's a watcher? What indeed? Long hours have many animancers spent studying such things. Not I, oh, not I. I'll tell you what I know, though, since fair is fair. And here we are, visiting you and I, and it reminds me of better times. Uh, good. I'm glad to have helped. Souls pass on. Some say through Audra stones, which are the blood veins of the world. They leave the world for a time and are reborn into it. Sometimes more than they were before, but usually less and seldom the same. For all souls, there is a time where they do not live, yet have not passed on. And those souls roam the world, same as you or I, either leaving or lost. But no one sees them because they have forgotten how. Hmm. A watcher sees, though, knows what to look for. And sometimes they know a person just by looking at them. Know where they've been in ages past when their bodies were other bodies. See memories even their honor can't recall. A wonder to behold when all goes well. A wonder! <laughs> what did you mean, when all goes well? Oh, nothing to be afraid of, I'm sure. It's just much to take in for some. Sometimes there's trouble sleeping or other difficulties. She smiles at you reassuringly, fanning out a tuft of long whiskers that sprouts from one of her cheeks. An inspired. You should Ooh. see old Meerwald. He could tell you much more than I. A watcher just like you. Helped many in his day. Took up in an old keep no one would claim. Not far, not far. Kadnua, beyond the Black Meadow. He will welcome the company. I think I survived a beer whack. Do you know why that would be? Did you now, dear? My, that would be something, wouldn't it? Could be luck, could certainly be. A storm can be a careless thing. Or maybe it got its hands around your soul but couldn't pick it up. A soul can be heavy if it stayed in one piece through its time. Strong souls, we call them in the trade. Cold, I mean. Cold them. Those days are all behind me, no? You said souls break apart over time. Oh, yes. Entropy. Rima Gan's work. We know little of why or how. We lose pieces of ourselves when we die and pick up pieces of others when we are born again. But less than what we lost. We try to stop it with the animantic sciences, but with little success. No. A very small few resist Rimergan's influence and stay together through some force of defiance, at least for a time. But they all succumb eventually, I think. Hmm. I want to know something about you. Me? <laughs> I'll bore you to tears, though. What happened to you? Uh, so I was, sorry, I was waiting for her to say something. She laughs, a rasping, choked cackle escaping from between rows of buttery yellow teeth, causing her body to bob up and down with each spasm. Seeing your blank expression, she catches herself. <laughs> Oh, come now. Such a question. As though the answer were plain as a rope tied for strangling. Allow an old dwarf her last bit of cheer. <laughs> well, I came where I was needed, didn't I? Offered my services to Lord Radric for a pittance. A humble pittance. I was to examine the Lord's wife. See why the gods have seen fit to poison her womb. Studied her for months. Looked high and low for impurities. Tested her balance. The permeability of her essence. Do you know what I found? Tell me. 
nothing at all. A healthy woman, head to toe, blessed with a beautiful soul. Such a sweet woman, too. Meek, but warm-hearted. A few months' time, and the lord of the house demanded answers. For a time, I told him what he wanted to hear. Oh, yes, my lord. She is riddled with imbalances. I must have time to cure her. As the birth drew near, he grew impatient, as lords do. And this is where I've ended up. Well, as much as I'm really interested in this woman, um, and I kind of like the spoken... I like her voice, actually. It's kind of the sing-song nature's got... I've gotten used to it. Um, but we're coming up to the end of the episode. So... Um, no, I'm gonna ask what an the answer is, and then we're gonna then we're gonna end. A student of the soul, something so basic yet so poorly understood, but so many breakthroughs have been made in my lifetime. Had been made, had been. To hear the locals tell it, we're a gang of soul manglers that preys upon the weak-minded, and the worst of us are. But the best of us, the best, inspirations, miracle workers. My parents were soul twins, miserable before they met, empty inside. It was an animancer who helped one find the other, turn their lives around. You wouldn't believe the stories. Amnesiacs helped to remember their lives. The suicidal brought back from the brink of oblivion. The elderly afforded extra moments to say their goodbyes. How soon we forget when we're afraid. It's a fascinating science. A fascinating time to be alive in a place like Deerwood that does not control the research, no? I love the Valian Republics for many things, but their recent caution will leave them behind, I fear. Cool. Well... I'm worried. I, I feel like this might continue once I say farewell. So um, I'm going to leave this episode here. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Um, I, I'm not sure if you can tell, but I'm flipping loving this. Um, and uh, I'm a little gutter that I've got to carry on this in, into a fourth episode on, on the trot. But I will do it. <laughs> uh, so thank you guys. If you've enjoyed, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, let me know what you're thinking. Um, share this with your mates. Uh, it, it, that little bit of exposure really does help. So thank you very much, and I will see you in, well, for me, the 15 seconds it takes to finish this recording. Thanks. Have a good one. Bye.